Hi everyone, I'm Jane at Rockin' Worms. Welcome to my channel. If you're looking for some fun worm activity, you're in the right place. Let's get into a bin and see what we're looking at tonight. This is one of my grow out bins. I haven't been in here for nearly a month. As you can see when I take the paper off, or I'm sorry, the plastic off, that there is no paper left, just these little bits here. So this bin is definitely looking for some attention. So let's get into it and see what we got. Let's uh, look at the castings right on top. It looks beautiful, first of all. And looking at this, I can see just a little bit of bits of food, but not terribly much. A lot of these little white specks will actually be um, the grit that's left over because I do kind of go heavy on the grit in my worm bin so they don't always eat it all. But it looks like these guys are ready to get sifted out and get some fresh bedding in here because this is all castings. All right, so let me, let me see how the moisture is. I mean, it feels good. Squeezes together, breaks apart pretty easily. You know what? Let's do a quick mini sift out because what I think I'm going to do is set these guys up for a horizontal migration. And if I can get some working space in this bin, that would be good. All right, let me just do a quick sift here. This is my standard way I do it nowadays. It is a 1 8 inch screen on top of a 1 12th inch screen. Oh yeah, look at that. that a lot came through. Actually, more than I had anticipated was going to happen, to be honest with you. So let me grab a bin here because I really wasn't expecting this much. Let me put this over here. Uh, yeah, what the heck, we'll do it this way. I'm just gonna put the uh, sifted worms in this bin to hold them for a few minutes. And I'm gonna get another bin to put the castings in. Like I said, I really wasn't prepared that, that this was gonna, you know, sift out the way it is, but I'll take it when I can get it because these worms certainly do need some fresh bedding. Now, the reason I use a 1 8 inch screen for my sifting, whereas a lot of worm wranglers use a 1 quarter inch screen, you know, both are fine, but because I use my homemade pre-compost mix, the worms go through it very quickly and turn it into much finer uh, castings more quickly. I don't have a lot of overs. I guess that's really what I'm saying is when other bedding materials are used, a lot of times there's more overs, which just means it takes the worms longer to you know, eat the bedding for the biota in the worm bin to break the bedding down so the worms can process it. But because, again, of the pre-compost being that much farther along the composting scale, the spectrum, the worms go through it very quickly. And I just don't have a lot of big chunks, so I don't need to use a one quarter inch screen to kind of sift that out first before I get to the castings. I can go right to the one eighth. All right, and let's see where I am in this. This is beautiful one eighth inch castings. The one eighth inch screen, by the way, is also very good for catching uh, cocoons, if that's what you wanna do as well. I'm gonna do one more sift, and that'll give me enough room in the worm bin to set up the horizontal, horizontal migration without, you know, the bin getting too full and too heavy for me to lift and manage easily. And that's another thing you should always keep in mind when you're 
a new worm wrangler in particular is set things up so they work for you and your abilities, okay? If I was some, uh, you know, young cameraman, I could use, you know, heavier bins and heavier, you know, weights because I could handle them easier. But since I am what I am, um, I need to, you know, keep my ability to lift and move my uh, worm materials around. Okay, let's stop here. This is the last one eighth inch sifting. Banging this out, where's my handy brush? Here it is. If I give it a couple taps, it really cleans off the screen very well, don't you think? And then the last thing I'm going to put in here is what came out from the 1 12th inch screen. And again, super fine stuff. This would be great for seedlings you know, seed starting mix, okay? And in case you're wondering, why did I sift it out and then just dump it all together? It's because I don't really mind having uh, both the 1 8 and the 1 12 sifting castings together. The reason I use the 1 12 inch below the 1 8 is sometimes worms go through the screen and it's easier for me to pick them out at this higher level than if they're on the bottom of uh, my bucket or in this case, my aluminum pan. All right, so I'm going to put these castings to the side. I will put them into my casting storage bucket um, afterward. And now I'm gonna set these worms aside and we're back into the worm bin. Let me put that over there. And now I'm just going to move the worms in the bin down to the non-working end of the bin, aerating as I go, looking to see if there's anything going on with my worms that I need to be aware of. Do I see any signs of protein poisoning? Do I see that I have a lot of worm bin companions in the bin, such as springtails, pot worms, or mites. Because if I do, that may signal to me that I want to take some, you know, action to reduce the number of bin companions. There's nothing wrong with bin companions. They can perform a great function. I'm going to pour the sift out worms in here. I usually do that a little bit later in the process and then, you know, tend to forget to do it at all. So I'm gonna do it early on here and save myself from forgetting. Okay, so the bin companions can perform a function, especially if you have uh, bigger chunks of bedding and your worms need some help from their friends to break it down into particle sizes that the worms can eat more quickly, the bin companions can do that, okay? But again, since I use pre-compost, I've already got a lot of biota in there performing that breakdown function on behalf of my worms, and I don't need the bin companions, all right? So I wanna keep my bin companions to a minimum. All right, so this is now set up so I can start a horizontal migration. I've got all the worms and the castings down here. And now I'm gonna set up a food zone. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take some of that pre-compost I've been talking to you about. And I'll uh, link in the description my uh, playlist. It's seven videos. My playlist on how you can start making pre-compost yourself out of free or nearly free ingredients and let's see let's see here here here's something see this this is i think more or less a, a little ball of coffee grounds see these little white dots can you see that cameraman okay this is biota this is food for your worms okay so this is what we want to see when we're pre-composting and if you look over here this is a piece of cardboard shred and see all those little white dots on it? Can you see that? 
Yeah, that's biota as well. So this is all food for your worms. So again, if I've got this going on in my pre-compost, I don't need those bin companions too much. All right, back to the bin. So I've got a little layer of the pre-compost in here. It's going to act also as an absorption layer for any um, liquid that comes out of my uh, feed, which in my particular case tonight, I won't probably have, but I do sometimes when I feed, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables as they decompose, they give off liquid and it just acts as an absorption level. This is my uh, just napkins from lunch. All right, so we're going to give them a uh, special treat here tonight. I was kind of cleaning out my kitchen cabinets and I came across this fruit cake. Okay. It's a old fashioned Claxton fruit cake. Uh, what does it say? World famous. Well, it's world famous as in I've never heard of it before, but cameraman told me just as we started to set up, he's like, what are you doing with the fruit cake? Um, and I said, yeah, I'm going to feed it to the worms. It's been in our cabinet for a while. We're not going to eat it. And he goes, oh my God, is that a Claxton? And I said, oh, how did, you, how did you even know that? And he goes, it's the only fruit cake I've ever heard of. So I was like, okay. But um, have you guys, any of you guys heard of Claxton fruit cakes? Is that why they're world famous? Because cameraman's heard about them? What about you? I don't know. I'm not a big fruitcake uh, aficionado, I guess. But no, anyways. Nobody is. Nobody is. But let me know in the comments if you've heard of Claxton fruitcakes. I'm just going to start slicing it. And if you've actually eaten fruitcake. And then, if you've eaten it, do you like it? Because I don't know that I've met a lot of people that will admit to eating it, let alone liking it. But I bet you the worms are going to like it just fine. So now that I sliced up the fruit cake, and I did that um, slicing it just to give it more surface area so the biota can get into it faster. The worms have more surface area so they can get into it. And we're just going to lay this on here and see what happens. Now, again, I have no doubt that the worms are going to eat this up. No problem. I don't think I've put anything in my worm bins that the worms haven't eaten. But, you know, it's kind of fun. And like I said, I'm getting it out of my cabinet. I don't need it. So let's, you know, get some value out of this product, okay? Um, I don't remember buying it. It was probably a gift. But somebody spent money. And certainly there were resources, okay, going into this food source to grow the various, you know, nuts and raisins and cherries. So uh, let's not have that go to waste by throwing it in the landfill. Let's run it through our worms and then we can put it in our garden. All right, I'm just gonna top it off here with a little bit of worm chow and then some powdered oyster shell for grit. And I'm gonna give them just the tiniest sprinkle of vegetable powder on top because there's a lot of fruit in there. So let's give them some veggie powder as well. And now we're just going to close it up. And I'm going to end up putting this back on the shelf. What's going to happen, hopefully, is the worms in this end of the non-working end of the bin where all these castings are they're going to sense that food and they're going to move into this food zone and start munching down and they're going to leave these castings at the end for me to come back in and sift out. Okay, obviously I can sift them out. I already did it. But hey, if the worms move out, it just makes it easier for me. And also I'll give, give uh, this open end of the bin some additional air. And that'll dry it down and make that sifting out go even better. Okay, what do I want to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to give them a little spritz of water. The uh, pre-compost is pretty moist, but that fruit cake was a little dry. 
So that's good. All right, let's put some newspaper back on top. There we go. I do the newspaper uh, mainly to moderate. That's the word I was looking for. Moderate my bin conditions. It keeps the moisture in a little bit more, as does this plastic covering. And it just makes it a more stable worm environment, okay? And that's why I do it. Some people, some worm wranglers, don't use a uh, paper top. They don't use plastic on the top. And again, that's perfectly fine. If it works for you and your worms, you're doing the right thing. What works for me in my environment is to use the newspaper and the plastic, okay? So we're all set. These guys are gonna go back on my shelf. I'm gonna make a note on my stickies here so I know what I did and when I did it. And let's check back on them, you know, in a week or so and see how they're liking that fruitcake. And remember, let me know how you like your fruitcake. All right. I'll see you next time on Yours in the Dirt, Jane.